Great. So look, staying in West Africa, moving a little bit to the east, uh, we're going to Burkina Faso. We've got Richard Hyde from West African Resources to the stage right now. Uh, Richard founded West African in 2006 and made the Sambrado discovery in 2015. Uh, but when many of you don't know is that uh, Richard had a promising rugby career uh, before snapping his Achilles tendon at the ripe age of 40, um, sending him into retirement from the West Scarborough's thirds. Um, and that really shut the door on his, an illustrious Wallabies career, I believe. Um, Richard, has a, uh, Richard and his team won the Digger of the Year Award last year at Diggers and Dealers. And uh, lesser known is that Richard won the Kitco CEO of the Year in North America last year as well. So congratulations for that, Richard, and welcome to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Paul. Uh, look, thanks for everyone turning up this afternoon. It's pretty windy outside, I know, and appreciate you turning up to listen. Um, just a big thank you to the Diggers team, to, um, to Miles, uh, Sharon and the rest of the team. We appreciate the opportunity to speak here. Um, we've been pretty busy at WAF in the last 12 months, so another big change in the company in the last 12 months. Uh, if you can see dark circles under my eyes, it's because it was up till midnight last night finishing off our feasibility study announcement, um, which has been appreciated. The share price has gone up this morning. Uh, the company is called... West African Resources, because we are in West Africa, and the code is WAF. If you like what you hear, you can go buy some shares. Uh, Forward-looking statements. Uh, these are on our website, on the ASX as well. Uh, so the one takeaway slide here for, uh, for the company, um, I mean, this kind of says everything about the company in a, in a bit of a nutshell. Uh, our guidance for this year is between 220 and 240,000 ounces a year at less than 1,100 US an ounce, and we're tracking really nicely to, to guidance at the moment. Uh, we've upped out our resources as of this morning, uh, so we've now got 12.6 million ounces in resources. Uh, reserves have increased significantly, 6.2 million ounces in res reserves now as well. So, and, and a 10-year production plan um, of 3.5 million, ounce, million ounces. So yeah, the next couple of years we'll be just still on San Brado, and then once we start construction and producing at Kiaka, obviously it steps up significantly. Uh, we've also got a really nice exploration package in Burkina. We've, um, pulled together over 1,700 square kilometres of exploration ground over a really interesting uh, geological area. And it was good kind of listening to Andrew's talk as well because, you know, we don't go to West Africa because it's easy. Um, we go there because it's probably got the best geology in the world and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second as well. Um, so market cap at the moment about 1.4 billion. And if you have a look at those resources, reserves, and market cap, you know, there's a bit of a disconnect here, particularly when you compare us to our Australian peers. Um, we, we, there is a significant discount uh, for West Africa, but all we can really do is work hard, make money, you know, pay down debt, which we've done last year. We, we produced nearly 300,000 ounces last year and paid back over 200 million US in debt. Um, so we, we're just doing what we can do and, and at some point the market's going to wake up and say, right, you guys are cheap. Um, why West Africa? Well, it's got the best geology in, in the world for finding gold deposits. Um, and the, the big companies are there. Uh, we are bigger now. We have been very small in the past, so we've come from a, you know, less than... $50 million market cap not that long ago to being $1.4 billion now, and that's because we've got an excellent team, um, really good people, excellent projects, and, and we've managed to deliver during some pretty challenging times. Um, the slide on the left, you can see there's uh, the red line at the, at the top, and I didn't get a chance to really redo the, the colour scheme here, so I apologise for that. But um, that's WAF at the top, so uh, plus 200,000 ounce year producers, we've been the best performing gold stock on the ASX for the last three years. Um, and then second on that is, is purchase, and there's probably another couple, like obviously Capricorn not quite doing as much production and, and also um, Emerald have done quite well as well. So um, you can see new companies coming on board with new projects, you're getting a lot of cash flow early and that's why we're actually um, we're outperforming the Australian projects which have got pretty much old tight assets with difficult sort of labour markets as well in Australia. Um, on the right hand side you can see that WAF again leading the market in, in margin, so we are the lowest cost producer on the ASX, uh, closely followed by purchase as well. Uh, capital structure, so that I won't get into this too much, but we've got some good coverage. Hopefully Paul's going to cover us soon. What do you reckon? We'll see how the presentation goes. Okay, <laughs> okay, thanks. I'll, I'll go hard, try harder. <laughs> um, so we've got, uh, obviously the company's changed a lot in the last uh, couple of years. We're very much an institutional company now, but 80% institutional insiders, and then there's about 20% of retail. Um, we closed the quarter with 153 million US in cash, uh, about 22 million US in, in bullion or in sort of unsold gold um, and market cap I mentioned before. 
So where are we? We're in Burkina Faso. Um, we've just picked up our second project last year, which we've been working on. We've got the feas feasibility study result out this morning. Um, we, I'll be talking about that first, and then I'll kind of talk about what that means, putting that into the, the assets we've already got operating in the, in the country. And um, like I was saying, it's, it's in a very neat position. We've got a contiguous set of permits there for about 1,700 square kilometres, at 150 kilometres of strike of, of really prospective um, structures and greenstone belts. Um, so the Kiaka project, which I'll talk about now, um, you can see what it looks like now. This is when I was on site in April. Um, when I come back next year, you'll probably see concrete and a bit of steel, hopefully. And then the year after that, we'll be pretty close to pouring gold. Um, so just to run through the highlights of the project, uh, it's 90% owned by WAF, 10% by the government. Uh, we acquired it last year from B2 Gold and GAMS for 100 million US in cash, and it's now 7.7 .7 million ounces in, in gold. So, you know, cracking deal for us. Um, it was an asset that, you know, B2's got, you know, competing pro uh, projects in their portfolio, so it wasn't getting the attention it deserved. Um, we've really pushed hard for the last six months to get this into feasibility study and, um, and we'll keep pushing to get it up the curve and into production. So it's located about 140 kilometres from Wagga. It's about 45k south of our existing operation, so a lot of synergies here. Uh, it's got a granted mining licence. It's got approved um, uh, uh, environmental permit, which we're updating. Uh, it's under the same mining code as San Brado, so it's something we're all very, we're very familiar with. Uh, it's a beast of a deposit, so if you have a look at that, I mean, this is probably, if this was in Australia, you know, we'd have a 1.4 plus billion dollar market cap just on this asset. Um, very low strip ratio, it's very wide zones of mineralisation, so between 100 and 400 metres wide. Uh, it's been drilled down to about 600 me vertical metres, it's still open. Um, very simple metallurgy, uh, there's lots of drilling that's been done historically. We've done some confirmational test work drilling as well, and, and we're... We, yeah, we, we kind of like what we see there as well. So overall resource is 7.7 .7 million ounces. Um, we've just dropped the cutoff grade recently with the, with the study, so we've re-reported the resource at a 0.4 cutoff. Um, majority of that is, is indicated, uh, and it all fits in a pit at, um, at $1,800 gold, so that's just constraining mineralisation. So what does that look like in reserves? Well, it's a 4.5 million ounce reserve um, at 0.9 of a gram, and that's based on 100% um, uh, uh, indicator resources, ooh, typo. Um, strip ratio is 1.8 to 1, so very low strip ratio. Uh, it's 2 k's long, 900 metres wide, and, and 450 metres deep. So it's a really solid pit, uh, and it's going to generate a lot of money. The early, the early sort of staging on this pit have got, has got a strip ratio of less than 1 to 1, so it makes money very quickly. It's conventional, so it's got great metallurgy. It's, um, also, we're looking at using the same sort of gear that we've got on site at San Brado, so there's nothing um, we need to bring in here that's new. Um, uh, the, the actual feasibility study, the, the, the process plant, uh, we are building pretty much what we build at San Brado, so just, but just bigger. So, and, we, and we've removed a few things out of it, trying to keep the capital down. 90% um, recoveries uh, at 100 micron grind, so still fairly, fairly coarse grind. Uh, we've gone for a nameplate 7, point, uh, sorry, 7 million tonne per annum plant. Yeah, what we found with San Brado was initially that was a 2.2 million tonne per annum plant. We've ramped it up. We got it up to probably 3 to 3.2 million tonnes per annum now. So we kind of experienced in debottlenecking and, and pushing the plant. So um, to keep the capital down, we've, we've pushed on a 7 million tonne per annum nameplate. We know we'll probably get another 20% out of that um, just through uh, design margin. Uh, we'll push it really hard. It's a simple sag ball operation. Probably can put gravity back in, but we've got it... Uh, we've got it out at the moment, keeping the capital down, so it's really fit for purpose. Um, and we've got same sort of mineralogy really as San Brado. So the dominant sulphide here is pyrotite, so we've got an oxygen plant going in as well to keep the, the dissolved oxygen levels up in the tanks. Uh, but uh, life of mine recoveries of 90%. Uh, and then we've also got the potential to expand this further because we end up with an 18 and a half year mine life, which is probably too long. So we've got to kind of, if we can compress that by about 20%, it obviously means we'll do. 20% more production per annum, which you know, is, will be good as well. Uh, so the layout, uh, this is what it looks like. It's, we've worked pretty hard to get this nice and compact. Um, so we're about 100 k's on bitumen from Wagga, and there's about 40 k's of gravel. The last 20 k's requires upgrading. We're going to build exactly the same camp, camp we built at San Brado. Uh, we're going to go with um, grid power. So the grid power in, in Burkina is getting better, and um, they're buying more power off Ghana, which is predominantly hydro power. 
Uh, there's about 200 megawatts of solar power going in uh, in the next uh, 12 to 18 months in Burkina, which is going to stabilise the grid even further. And then by about 2030, there's another 500 megawatts of, of solar power planned to go in. So, and there's, there's um, plans to put a, uh, about a 50 megawatt solar plant right next to the project. So that's um, going to make the power situation uh, a lot better than what we've got at San Brado, where we're actually making power on site by burning HFO. Um, so obviously, it's, it's cheaper than burning HFO. It's also um, better for us as far as um, you know, reducing our emissions per ounce. Uh, Tailings dams, uh, HDP line, just like we've done it at San Brado. Um, water source is very nearby. Uh, and it's a, it's a great project that's going to generate a lot of jobs as well. So we're working on updating the SIA at the moment. We, we've actually um, inherited quite a good database and, and sort of body of work from B2 Gold, who did a really good job with um, managing the environment and social work. Uh, so we're leveraging off that. Uh, we've got uh, our team on site already working with local uh, community and stakeholders. I just mentioned the grid power is going to reduce our emissions per, per ounce, which is good. And we expect to create about 1,200 uh, jobs on, uh, for this project, which is kind of similar to San Brado as well. So the metrics on, at, uh, at 1750 gold, uh, so we're recovering 4.1 million ounces at 90%. Uh, the first five years, we were averaging over 230,000 ounces, and life of mine, 18 and a half years, is going to average nearly 220,000 ounces. So I think we can do some work in the next uh, six months and, and identify areas where we can um, compress that a bit and increase throughput. Um, Pre-production capital is about 430 million US dollars. Uh, the, the total development cost is about 470 million US dollars. Um, so what we've done there is simplify the, the design that, that we um, we had previously what B2 were looking at uh, and we just try to get it fit for purpose so we can build something and get up out of the ground making money again pretty quickly. Uh, it generates a lot of cash over the mine life so all the standing costs of $953 an ounce for the first five years and just over $1,000 an ounce life of mine. Uh, nearly $3.4 billion Aussie of pre-tax free cash flow. So it's a serious project um, and a post-tax MPV of over a billion dollars Australian as well. Uh, so the, the team's kind of, we've kept the team together since 2020 when we, when we actually finished building uh, San Brado. Uh, we've recently hired uh, Matt Scully, who's been on board and fitted in perfectly into our team. Uh, so Matt built uh, the two Perseus projects in Ivory Coast, so he's got really good experience. Uh, so we'll do the same thing we did last time, which is we'll manage Earthworks Camp Power Supply and Mine Services. Um, Lyco is like a podium, we'll look, look after the, uh, the process plant construction, so the same, the same process we did last time. Because uh, we're generating so much cash flow at the moment, um, we, we're looking to fund the project through cash flow and, and some, uh, a corporate debt facility or a project debt facility. So we've, we've just started that process at the moment using Arimco. Again, we used them last time, so it's a, it's a well-trodden path for us. Uh, last time we did this, we, we ended up with 14 bids between 120 and 100 or 215 million US for our first project. So, you know, we're quite confident that we'll um, we'll get good interest in in, uh, in the Kiaka project. So we're, we're looking to target um, you know, shortlisted uh, lenders by Q3 and then appoint a preferred lender or lenders by by Q4. Uh, so we're doing um, early works at the moment. Uh, so sterilisation, drilling camp. We're doing some um, access roads and other things like that and good social programs with the community. Uh, we're looking to start major works early next year and that'll see us um, producing gold in 2025. So this is, uh, the, the, I guess, the growth of the company and resources from 2014, not very much, to 2022, 12.6 uh, million ounces. Um, the 10-year updated plan, which we got out this morning as well, so the next three years is San Brado only. And then after that, 2025 onwards, we're, we're averaging over 400,000 ounces a year. So it's a step change. And this is, we've got two long life assets, which I'll, I'll talk about San Brado in, in a minute. But so Kiark is obviously uh, 18 years and, and San Brado is about 13 years as well. So we've got two assets. We're going to generate a lot of cash flow for a long time. So this is San Brado, just quickly touch on that. Um, <coughs> conventional projects of open pit underground. We're using contractors. Um, we've got Parenti on site doing the uh, open pit mining. We've got... Um, Burnkart doing underground mining. Uh, we basically brought all those Australian skills that, you know, what we think we do really well in Australia, we've taken that to Burkina and we're, we're doing a lot of training as well and making sure we do all of our work to a really high standard. Um, so 
the project's got uh, nearly 5 million ounces in resources, uh, reserves about 1.7 million ounces, um, and then resource plus inventory of 2.5. Uh, we're operating really safely, so the, the safety statistics are probably lowest in the, in the, uh, in the industry, uh, with um, over 11 million hour, uh, man hours, or man hours, hours, uh, LTI free, and uh, TRIFA trending down at 1.8. Uh, so far this year, we, we're tracking really nicely to guidance. Um, so we've produced about 130,000 ounces of gold. Our guidance is between 220 and 240. Um, we've processed about 1.5 million ounces at about 2.8 grams per tonne. Uh, we completed a mill reline uh, late last quarter, or sorry, quarter before, so we've been pushing tonnes uh, for the last, uh, last quarter, and I think we'll continue that for the next... Um, next two quarters, so I think we're on really, in really good shape to, uh, to either meet or beat guidance again. Uh, closed the quarter um, with, with 153 million in cash, uh, 22 million in unsold gold, and cost so far are trending um, around about 950 an ounce. Uh, we're getting back into expiration, which is what I really love, um, and I think you know, targeted expiration is where you can really deliver for shareholders because of the cheapest ounces you can find. So even like 50 or 100,000 ounces near mine when you're already set up and going uh, is really valuable. And we're looking to have two, two centres, obviously, over time, but um, by 2025 we'll have Kiaka up and going, so all those southern projects will end up going to Kiaka if, if we find more, which I think we will, and then the northern projects will go to San Brado. Uh, this is a new project that we, we picked up um, last year. We've been drilling it this year, so MV3. It's only 6Ks from San Brado. It just gives you an idea of you know, the prospectivity of West Africa generally and also Burkina Faso. I won't read out all the drill results, but there's some really healthy drilling uh, results there. It'll be a nice, sweet, open pit, which um, will help with cash flow while we're, we're, we're building, um, uh, building Kiaka. At the moment, MV3 is about 800 k, uh, metres in strike, and it's open in all directions. So we're a gold company that makes money, and because we're making really good money, it means we can actually do ESG properly. So I think um, it's, it's, it's different doing ESG in Africa because you are dealing with your stakeholders on a daily basis. When you develop a project, you're moving people who are living on the project. So you have to maintain a social license to operate. There's just no other way of doing it. Um, we're doing a lot of work in, in the region at San Brado, and we look to roll all those plans out at, at Kiaka as well. Um, so we've built nurseries, we've built... Uh, schools, uh, hospitals, you know, we're the biggest employer with, with, um, uh, in, in the region. We've, we've got training programs. You know, we're auditing ourselves and being audited by international consultancies as well. So we're doing our work to a very high standard. And I've said it before that, you know, you, you can come to our mine site in, uh, in, in Burkina and the work that's being done there is to a, as high a higher standard than what you'd find here in Australia. Again, so programs that we're doing, so education and health, so obviously COVID was a big one through the last couple of years, um, but there's a lot of other programs we're doing around um, uh, women's health and uh, education, so uh, French language courses um, we're doing, uh, we've engaged with a, a local group for uh, driving licences, um, we've got uh, a lot of diversity training programs with the ladies as well um, in, in, the, in the area, we've got you know, female truck drivers on site, so we're breaking a few sort of barriers on site as well, which is really, really, really good. Um, and we also pay into the local uh, development fund, which is 1% of revenue, so we're making a huge difference in Burkina. So the workforce we've got, and we've actually managed through this uh, the last few years pretty well, um, you know, 90% of our workforce comes from Burkina, um, so we are a massive local employer. Um, with only 10% of our workforce coming from outside of Burkina. So some of those people are coming from Africa, so South Africa or West Africa or other expats, but some of them are also coming out of Europe or Aussies who have re domiciled to Europe. 65% um, of our senior roles are, are held by Burkinabes, and 20% of our senior roles are held by women. So we've got a you know, female HR manager, open pit mining manager's female, um, uh, health and safety's female. Um, there's, there's a... And every woman who's got a job in our business has got it because she's really good at what she does. Um, so we don't believe in quotas. I think quotas can cause problems, but we certainly have a, um, a policy of hiring the best person. If that person's a female, um, then she will get the job. And 
that can cause issues in Africa sometimes, but you know, what we've proven in the last couple of years is that um, you know, we've got a very, very good team on site, and you need a really good team to, uh, to work in Africa. Uh, we're also rolling out uh, pro programs, Australian training programs, so um, health and safety programs, um, emergency response and training programs. We also recently helped out at the Pacoa mine, which was, um, had a tragic flooding event uh, in the last, or last quarter as well. So our, our people who have been training have actually had some practical experience now as well, which you know, we, hope, uh, we hope they never have to use for us, but it's been a, a benefit for us to actually have been involved in that, um, in that event. Right, so why invest? I did say the, the code's WAF on the ASX. So we've got a quality board and management team. We're aligned with shareholders. We're all shareholders, either through you know, buying shares directly or from uh, you know, performance rights, part of our incentive plans. Um, what we're trying to do is, is uh, under-promise and over-deliver. I think in our industry, uh, particularly, and I've been through it as a junior company, it's, it's really hard to try and uh, get the expiration or get the money into it to build a project. So the temptation is to overpromise, and if you don't hit your targets, it really kind of creates a lot of issues in the industry because. <coughs> What we need to try and do is build trust with investors. Um, so what we will do is, and continue to do is, is to make sound investments to, to put, put forward um, solid targets that we can achieve. And we've been doing that for the last couple of years. Um, obviously gold exposure, we're unhedged and we've got a big resource and reserve base now. Some of the slides I showed you about social license to operate, that's real and we're, and we're doing it. Um, and we're also implementing systems that kind of hold us to a very high standard. Uh, we've got very strong cash flow, we've got excellent exploration ground um, and we're getting back into exploration drilling as well and um, we're targeting um, over 400,000 ounce a year production by 2025 as well. So uh, if you did enjoy the, the talk, we'd appreciate it if you have a good look at us uh, on the ASX. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. We, we do have a minute or so for questions, so if there is a question in the audience, I'm sure Richard would love to answer it. Yep, you've just got one down the front here, potentially. Were you waving at your friend? Or? Oh, no. <laughs> well, I've, I've got one while that gentleman considers this question. Um, so you, you outlined how you are one of the lowest cost, or the lowest cost um, producer among your peer group, um, and, and highlighted obviously Africa as being a, a positive there. Um, you know, I think we were looking at diesel was up 60% or something in Western Australia, for example. Yeah. What impacts uh, are, are you not seeing, I suppose, that allows you to be such a low cost producer? Um, so we are seeing costs go up. Um, so diesel, explosives, HFO have all gone up in the last two quarters. Um, we have seen a stronger US dollar as well, which has kind of helped um, offset some of those increases because most of our, a lot of our, um, uh, operating costs are fixed in euro, yep. so the government sets a fuel price that's in euro. That kind of helps, but um, it's still challenging. But we're paid to, ch to manage those challenges. You know, I think that's what we should do as an industry and a, a, as a company, as, as managers of the company. So, and that's what we're focused on doing. Um, and you know, our goal is to make as much money per ounce as possible. So then we can do the good things, and hopefully, once we've paid Kiaka off, we can then return to shareholders right. or, or go and find another project to develop. Okay, excellent. Mm. And, and you, you do Burkina Faso very well. Mm. Um, and obviously you're going to have a bit on your plate with Kiaka and mm. that. But, but you know, are you looking at expanding outside of Burkina at all? Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I think um, three is a good number. I think we can manage three on our, on our three projects on our current uh, management team. I, you know, I don't want to get too big because mm -hmm. it's, already, it's, already it's already quite big now. But I, I think as a, as a management team we can, we can do three mines, which was... You know, I'm not throwing forward-looking statements out there, but you know, targeting sort of 200,000 ounces per asset would be, you know, pretty solid. So I'd like to I'd like to be in that position where we're doing you know plus 600,000 ounces a year through three assets, yeah. and build all of them. So we're building a new plant each time. You know, we've done the geology really well, which is what you know my background is, um, to make sure that when we go and mine it, it's actually there. You know, and that, that's I think my preference is to to find assets that need a bit of love and a bit of work, and then d develop them. Excellent. Great. Mm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please uh, thank Richard for a uh, good discussion at the end and a very good uh, presentation. So thank you. Thank Richard. you. Cheers. Right, cheers. <laughs>